Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Bowhunter Die. Justin, it is finally getting warm outside. Birds yes. are hitting the ground. And speaking of turkey, speaking of birds, recipes. Just, I'm starving right now. I'm not going to lie, guys. <laughs> it is 12.30. It's lunchtime. I'm, I'm dying. I did not eat enough breakfast. But enough. I'm thinking about these delicious birds right now. Yes. You shot a couple. What are you I doing have. with yours? I, uh, I took half of a breast and I ran it through the meat grinder the other night. I've been eating turkey tacos the last three nights. And yeah, but that's not enough detail. Delicious. Okay, great. You ran it what? through the thing. How, how are you preparing it, man? I'm starving. Give me how some do you make a taco? Food. You grind the meat up and put some seasoning in it and right. put it on a tortilla right. and eat it. <laughs> it's not rocket science. I mean, everything? The full-blown tacos? Uh, what, what constitutes a full-blown oh, taco, man? man? Salsa. Well, hey, we want to we want to <laughs> learn about your turkey recipe, so comment below. Don't forget to also subscribe to the channel and spread the word about Bowhunter Die. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Bowhunter Die. Turkeys are finally starting to hit the ground. We got warm weather out there, Justin. Yes. I'm leaving for Kansas at four o'clock. I'm yes. ready to go. This you, is good stuff. I, and I hope you guys shoot some birds. You should have definitely some better weather than Dustin and I had when we're there. But finally, it looks like the weather has turned the corner. We've got nothing but warmer temperatures in sight, which is awesome because I gotta tell you, sitting in a blind when it's 20 some odd degrees chasing turkeys, you start to question your sanity. Or for those of you up in the, the northern states that had a foot of snow on the ground, you guys know what I'm talking about. So Todd, first up, uh, what are we starting with, man? Well, I tell you what, one of, I, Listen, nothing against your hunt. Your hunt was good, but I got to tell you, I like Jack's hunt. So, I mean, we're going to kind of keep this stuff in order, and youth season was first, so we're going to sure. go ahead and dive into Jack's hunt, and there's, he does a There's great nothing job. as entertaining as watching a young person go on one of their first successful hunts, just that enthusiasm that they have. So, first up, we are going to join Jack Alford and his dad, Tom, uh, on a youth season here in Illinois. Then we're going to jump over to Kansas with myself and Dustin. So, let's get started. All right, well, today is March 5th uh, in the afternoon. You know, I've been out doing a bunch of turkey scouting the last couple days, and great news, Illinois has extended the youth hunting season um, statewide, which is kind of cool. Instead of one weekend, now they get two. So, my son Jack has uh, been patiently waiting to go do some turkey hunting and now we have the opportunity so I'm really excited to get him out uh, and of course we've got like two hours to hunt um, because we've got spring hockey and it's our first game so we can't miss it but um, set up in a new piece of property uh, relatively close to my house about 30 minutes away and uh, after scouting for a few days I I figured out that there's some birds um, kind of roosting back here behind me in these pine trees. So this is a uh, this area that I'm in right now is part of a habitat restoration project where they've eliminated all the invasive stuff and they're actually trying to grow it back to prairie, which is really neat. Uh, the birds love it, the deer love it. It's great cover, and uh, it'll actually give us a nice spot right here where I can put the decoys out and hopefully call one of the big toms over. Uh, they should be able to see it from a long ways off and also give my son Jack a uh, hopefully like a 10 yard shot. So I'm going to go ahead and get the ground blind set up and uh, set it right here. I can see that way, see that way, that way. Put those decoys right out in front. So let's do this. Bow hunter die, baby. All right, so it looks good. This is where I'll be running the camera out of this side here and then Jack will be shooting right here. So be close quarters but I think this setup's gonna work we'll put the decoys right out there you know I used to be really concerned with uh, brushing the blind in with turkeys but honestly I've 
you can put in a bare dirt field and it don't, doesn't seem to bother them as long as you're not moving in here. But uh, this looks good. I like this setup. Hey guys, we're out here. Turkey on North of my dad. We just heard a couple of co cobbles. I'm really excited for the sun today. And hopefully it goes down. Hopefully. <laughs> We got one. We got a big one. <laughs> Look like a good shot. Oh shoot. Oh shoot. Okay, 
Percent increment. Give me a yank. Give me a yank. Grab him, grab him by the head, head. Head. Alright. Dude. 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 <laughs> yes. Hey guys, I'm really, this is my first turkey, and I'm really happy because I didn't think it would be this good. They came right into the decoys, and they were walking away, and my dad called, and I got a shot off, and I killed this bird. And I want to thank my dad to letting me come out here to shoot this turkey. It's really big. I didn't think I would get a big turkey like this. I thought I would get a small one. I don't even know what to say. You excited? Yeah, very excited. What do we always say at the end of our hunt? Fall hunter die, baby. All right, good afternoon guys. It is April 7th uh, here in Northern Illinois in my backyard, actually uh, playing around with the Mantis ground blind. For those of you that are following along in the Instagram story, uh, you see that I got this blind the other day and uh, Dustin and I are getting ready to head to Kansas for a couple days, try to shoot uh, a bird or two. So I figured uh, it would probably be beneficial for me to learn how to use the blind, set it up, take it down, uh, move it around if need be. We got a couple chairs in here. I'm trying to figure out where the best windows are gonna be to shoot out of. Uh, best spot to put the decoys in order to be able to film uh, and shoot uh, a lot of stuff that you need to figure out with this equipment uh, and you really don't want to be learning on the fly if you can avoid it so got the blind all set up plenty of room in here uh, and what I've also got here I'll show you in a second is the fourth arrow uh, pillar camera arm which is a really cool thing for those of you filming out of ground blinds whether they be portable or permanent uh, they make mounts for both but essentially you've got uh, uh, a monopod attached to the side of the blind that you can put a camera arm uh, on, which is great because it saves space. Uh, I tell you, having a tripod in a blind with multiple people usually is a, a real pain. Uh, so this thing is gonna actually be a lifesaver for us, I think, out there. Super easy to pack in, lightweight, and very uh, adjustable. So looks like we got everything blind-wise good to go. Uh, I just need to finish packing up the truck. Need to shoot the bow a little bit more and we'll be hitting the road for Kansas tomorrow and we will be hunting Monday morning in 20 some odd degree temperatures, possibly some snow on the ground. So not exactly what we were hoping for, but you take what you can get. So let's uh, guess get to it. Look at you guys in your matching shirts. You gotta say thank you to Jennifer for allowing us to change our plans at the last moment. And my so wife. go with Jay-Z. And my other wife, yeah. Todd, too. And your other wife, Todd. Wait, oh. And Amy. <laughs> Todd and Amy. so many wives? I know. So today is April 8th and Dustin and I made a last minute decision to head to Kansas and hunt for a day and a half, roughly, and then come home. So, uh, we're in St. Hopefully we make it there alive. The conditions aren't the best, but roads are in uh, pretty good shape. So the plan is to get there with enough time tonight to get our tags bought and do a little bit of scouting. Hopefully we can roost some birds before the morning. Uh, we may or may not set up the ground blind tonight. It all depends on what we see. But for right now, I can definitely tell you my windshield wiper is nice. <laughs> my antenna looks like it's gonna break off. So I'm gonna concentrate on driving, getting us there safely. And we will see you guys when we get to Kansas. All right, we are officially in Kansas, waiting for a train to cross in front of us. But uh, we went to the property where I shot my bird last year. Uh, didn't see any birds out in the field. So uh, one of Dustin's buddies who lives in the area uh, scouted some birds out for us earlier this afternoon. It's about a 40 minute ride over to that piece of property. So we think we can make it there right before dark. We're gonna see if we can't uh, see some of these birds fly up in the roost. Just make sure they're there. 
and then uh, get the ground blind set up and be back in the morning. So that's the plan. We've got a little bit of a drive ahead of us, so let's go. So a bunch of turkeys out in this field, which is a piece of property that uh, Dustin's buddy, his secret friend, turned us on to today to help uh, put us closer to our objective of shooting turkeys. So we're gonna let these birds roost and maybe come up with a plan on what we're gonna do. I don't know if we're gonna set out the blind tonight or what, but it's a good sign, we got birds. Well, morning one here in Kansas. It's a cold one, it's about 30 degrees this morning, but the plan up till now has worked perfectly. But unfortunately, when the birds came off the roost this morning, they pitched onto the other side of this little finger that's only maybe 20 yards wide that separates these two fields, basically. So the birds went that way. There's a ton of birds gobbling over there still within a couple hundred yards of us. So we still got birds around. We had two birds come down into the field they were in, we just can't see them, so there's still hope for this morning. There's a ton of birds here, so we're just gonna camp out probably for a couple hours. Hope so, hopefully, something makes it into this field and uh, show some interest in the decoys. So now we sit and wait. Those three jakes that we saw earlier, they went on the other side of this this thing over here. We thought they were gone. All of a sudden, Dustin and I are sitting here BSing about something. And I'm looking out this window, it's talking to Dustin. I'm looking out the window and they just walk right by, right into the decoys, eight yards. He's dead right over in that in the grass there. And his two buddies are pecking on him. If we would have acted quicker, you probably could have got one of those other ones, but we still got another day to hunt. The rest of today and all He's forcing it. He's if funny. I call that one back and shoot him, we're gonna go get more tags. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good point. We can try it. Nice work. Uh, 
first sit in the Mantis. And it was a good one. Suppose we'll knock another arrow just in case. Good plan. Just never know with these turkeys. Well, we're about uh, 50 yards maybe from the blind. Bird's dead right here. Let's go grab him. The old Spitfire Triple X does the job once again. Good bird, eh? Real. Yeah. yeah. Two. Guys, well, here's the end of my first successful hunt for 2018, uh, season nine of Bowhunter Die Here. Uh, you guys saw the story. Just, Dustin and I drove down uh, nine hours yesterday, kind of a last minute decision to come down here to Kansas, but we wanted to take advantage of this early archery season that they have here. It opened this morning, so we came down last night, thanks to one of Dustin's buddies, uh, put us on a piece of property, public property, but he had seen some birds in here. We roosted them last night, came in after dark, set up the blind, the decoys and everything. Uh, unfortunately, most of the birds pitched down and went away from us, but these three jakes came into this field. They worked up in this morning, but just wouldn't, you know, come into the decoys. We thought they left. Uh, we were just sitting in the blind, kind of BSing, and all of a sudden we look out the window and bam, they just worked right in here uh, perfectly. All three of them came right into the decoys at eight yards. Uh, I shot the, the one that was closest to me. We got another Rio, so this is my, my second Rio Grand Turkey in two years here in Kansas. And, uh, Heck of a way to, to start the season off. So now we need to get Dustin a bird and uh, maybe then go buy some more tags and try to shoot a few more of them. There's an absolute pile of birds in here. But um, first turkey with the Triax. Uh, just like last year, I'm shooting an NAP Spitfire Triple X, which is a two inch cut, three blade mechanical, and absolutely just tore this bird up. He didn't go more than maybe 50 yards. So couldn't be happier with the equipment. Decoys worked great. So, heck of a way to start off the season. Now we need to find us another bird to shoot. So, hopefully we'll see you guys in a little bit. Alright. It is the afternoon uh, opening day here in Kansas. Yeah, we've relocated our blind kind of up here to the top of this ridge, closer to where the birds, uh, the majority of the birds roosted last night. So, um, no, it's like mid-30s. It was supposed to get to 40s, but I'm not feeling it. Um, so anyway, we're kind of in the central spot where we're hoping all these birds are going to come meet and uh, see the decoys. So, and hopefully we'll get to show you the rest of the story.
sight of the blind. It makes you feel really good. So there's a bunch of other toms around here that we've seen. Justin just spotted like a jumbo double bearded bird. So we're gonna uh, slide down here and grab him and uh, do a quick interview, check it out, and then probably hop back in here. So. That's good stuff right there. That's a uh, hen kind of kind of led these birds to us. We called at her and she came and was answering. I was talking pretty good and we looked over and saw a strutter and then there was two. So uh, they just kind of worked their way in and my glove actually fell off my lap when we were they were like 30 yards and they got they didn't get spooked. They just got a little antsy. I told Jess I wasn't going to wait for him to come to decoys, so this is, uh, I would imagine it's an eastern Rio cross, but, uh, you know, it's definitely not, uh, it's got some eastern in it, which is what I was kind of hoping for, so beautiful bird nonetheless, uh, happy to make a good shot with uh, the new uh, 10 point the shadow in XT, so I will, uh, Every single time, you know. I like shooting, shooting animals with everything. I don't care if it's a crossbow or a bow. It's just fun to be out with friends and uh, get it done. So that made the nine-hour drive for a day and a half well worth it. You know, we're gonna uh, drag him back over to the blind and hop back in it and see if we can't get another one on the ground. Bow hunter die. Well, Todd, as we said, it was a great hunt from Tommy and Jack. You know, talking to those guys, they only had a couple hours to try to, you know, seal the deal that morning because Jack had a hockey game. And to oh, that's Tom, all they needed. <laughs> well, to Tommy's credit, you know, one thing that I think we found over the years is scouting for turkeys really pays off. When you just go in blind yeah. to a piece of property, it's tough to figure out, you know, where they're at, where they're roosting, what fields they're using throughout the day. So, you know, Tommy went out there a lot of mornings to try to listen for birds gobbling, you know, before he went to work used his stealth cams as yeah. well, you know, specifically in video mode to try to, uh, you know, cover a wider range of areas and was able to find exactly where those birds were roosting and that plan paid off. So if there's one thing that I've learned in the five or six years of me turkey hunting now is that scouting 100% pays off. Well, and, you're, and also just with your hunt too, I mean, being able to have eyes on the ground, I mean, sure. obviously you're back here, you've got your, you know, Dustin's friend there, the secret friend. I'm still trying to learn what all those details <laughs> are. But, uh, I mean, there's no question about it. When it comes to turkey hunting, like Justin said, I mean, I think it's the, some of the old spots that we had together. I mean, we were also deer hunting in those spots. So, you know, you sure. you're, you're just begin to learn what the birds are doing and where they're hanging out. It does make those hunts be a lot more successful, yeah. sure. Well, and, and you guys will see Well, what did you say? Yes, that was it. He was about ready to yes. say, he, he was going to say that, well, his beard on his little Jake was much much smaller than the Jack's. Jack. Jack's. Or Dustin's. The bird Dustin <laughs> shot had like, I think it was just shy of 12 inches, the, the beard that, on that one that he shot. But the interesting th thing about his bird is it had like almost no spurs. You know, they huh. were just, I don't know if they were worn down or never grew or what the deal was, but super long beard, not much for spurs. But yeah, definitely, you know, one thing back to the scouting and just the historical observations is, you know, I shot another bird here in Illinois just recently that you'll see on an upcoming show. But like in that particular farm. I'd never turkey hunted it until this year, but having deer hunted it for five or six years, I kind of knew which side of farm of the farm that the turkeys were using, yeah. which is why I hunted over there. And it's just something for people to keep in mind that, you know, trail camera data doesn't always pertain to right now. Sometimes it's just 
what you've seen in years gone by sure. of how the animals are using that particular piece of property. So I will say, Justin, you are on fire this year. You got me beat, man. You got, you I got, got a you couple got more turkey tags out there. You're left to go here yet. So oh, man. just never know. Oh, if I can keep my wife happy, <laughs> and she'll let me go turkey hunting anymore. So uh, you know, those, that's it for the turkey hunts that we've got. We've got some more great footage coming up. But before we get into that. Uh, a little bit of tell, them, tell them a little bit about our recent project. Well, we, you know, last year I had plenty of hours sitting in the stand without ever shooting anything. Thank you. I, 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 I was a loss of words there. there. I, was thinking, I was trying to think of something a little more crafty there, Justin. But the one idea that did come to mind was kind of a fun one that I wanted to put together with Justin and Brandon and our team here. And it, it, it came out good. I want to ruin it. So let's just go ahead and let you get a glimpse of what we put together. I just got another text. This is the third text I got from our other teammates seeing bucks this morning. Dude, this stand sucks. Maybe if you weren't on your phone so much, you'd actually be seeing some Me being on the phone is not, there's been no deer to Relax. see. Relax, I put this stand here myself. It's a good spot. Yeah. Oh, big buck, big buck, get off your phone. Oh, God, he's a big one. That's a big one. Get any sense? Yeah, I got some. This is heat, this usually works. That's not working either. I got one here. I got some more. Try that too. Dude, he doesn't like it. He's he's gonna leave. We gotta try something else, dude. Do you got anything else? What can we try? Yeah. I got my idea. Yeah, I got one too. You got one? Yeah. Hurry up. Alright. Get you, the dope. You buck cry. Dopely. I think he saw us. Dude, he went. Dude, you I, moving up there? I think he busted you. You were on your phone. No, the whole I wasn't time. on the phone the whole time. You were on your phone. No, I the was morning. not. I, I told you, we should have just nothing. went to the stand over there. Whatever. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that little video that Justin and I put together. Come on now, guys. We all know that we know somebody that's acted that way in a tree before. Me. We, we've all you. done it. I all mean, of us have done it. We did forget the Snortweez. Oh, how Everybody did we Everybody points that, that out. So we're sorry Gosh. to all of you Snortweez fans out there that we forgot about you. So guys, if you liked that video, you could check it out on our YouTube page as well as Facebook. It's called Desperate Bow Hunters. Make sure you share it with your friends. Guys, next up, we're going to have a couple updates from Todd and Dan Richardson, what they've been doing uh, in the off season. Then we're going to get a great tech tip from PJ Riley over at Lancaster Archery. Let's check that out now. lease right here that we've had this year got through the hunting lease network and I decided this year that I'm gonna let this one go and I'm gonna ante up to a different spot um, it was fun hunting here I saw some good animals I had a couple good encounters a couple smaller bucks uh, just unfortunately was never able to find the buck that I was looking for on this particular piece of property so 
we are going to slip in here, pull a couple of stands, grab a couple of trail cameras, go over and check out a different lease, and hopefully 2018 starts off good. So let's find some sheds today. All right, guys, we're going to slip in here. Like I said, this is the spot that we're still undecided whether I'm going to keep this year or not. But believe it or not, a little cedar over here. And totally typical, too, because, you know, this is a south-facing hillside. You know, the sun's going to be right here all day long. You got these cedars, and sure enough, we got a small little four-point shed over here. So let's slide up here and grab it. Take a look at it. First one of the year. three four five nice little buck i actually think this may be the one that i had the encounter with last year when i came in here darn squirrels are already starting to do their job and tear them apart so that's what that's what this is all about guys we finally had a little bit of snow excuse me snow a little bit of rain things melted off this would have been a tough find you know a week ago but you come right after it rains most of the snow is melted so let's see what else we can find come on we can't be more than, what, five minutes into this adventure this morning. And we found that shed. And there's, that might be actually the buck that I had the small encounter with down there. He's dead. He definitely didn't make it. So let's go take a look at him. Not a bad little buck. I'm pretty sure this is the one. Oh boy. Huh. Starting to smell pretty good. This here is, I think, actually the one that I did have the encounter with. I remember this little bit of uh, a little swale or curvature to its rack right there, but would have been a great up and comer. Not sure what what got him. Ah, look at that. Not sure what uh, what got him, but pulled out of here, grab a couple cameras, see if we can find a few more sheds and slip on out of here neat piece of property but i think we've got some better things in the works so let's hurry up and get out of here can't believe it here we are season nine of bow hunter die this piece of property really kicked my butt last year i've had some good bucks that i wanted to shoot but man they just kept running circles around me we're out here today we're going to start working on some property management did a new pine tree planting uh going to slowly start building up some of the thermal cover for uh, winter bedding area. Um, so we planted about five or six more rows of pine trees. Got a beautiful switchgrass field here behind me that we just started doing a control burn on right now. Um, one specific area though I'm really keying in on this year is back actually behind where this uh, burn is going on which is going to be an area where we went in and we did a nice little clear cut with two pinch points. So you can hunt it on a south wind and on a north wind. So really looking forward to hitting that spot this year. I'm gonna take you over there and show you that in a little bit. Otherwise, just a little bit of property maintenance today. See if I can figure out how to outsmart these bucks because last year they put it to me. Had a great encounter with one, but I just couldn't pull it off last year. Unfortunately, I didn't have my camera head tight enough. And when that buck came in, I just I could never get that camera locked into where I needed it. So let me get back to this controlled burn and uh, we're gonna get a few cameras out to get some uh, idea what these deer are and who's still alive. I love this time of year. Hey, good morning. It's March 11th. I have not found a shed antler yet. This is very untypical for me. I've usually got at least two or three by now, but that's just the way it goes. Wow, it's cold. 37 degrees. I've got a little bit of sleet coming down right now. There's a chance of rain. Uh, I went ahead and dressed light because I'm going to do a lot of walking today. Uh, main goal today, not just shed antler hunting. I'm also doing scouting. This is post-season scouting. So I'm going to kind of show you some of the things I look for. And uh, I like to have a backup plan. So you get those stands that always produce, but they don't always produce. You got to remember that. So sometimes you need a second avenue to pursue. So uh, that's the plan today. Uh, not much time left for me to shed hunt. I've got bow fishing coming up. I've got spring turkey. So I'm going to go out there and I'm going to pound some ground today. See what we can find.
got a little story about this place right here. This is a little flat, kind of a lower area in all this uh, coal mine ground. Uh, it's real hilly back in behind me. We call them spoil banks here. Uh, one year, this little flat right here was just beat up with scrapes. I mean, absolutely beat up, and it stunk in here. So, I placed a stand up here, thinking the deer were going to come in down a long draw back here. Uh, but I kept getting winded by bucks. I could catch glimpses of them up on this hill. And it seemed like time after time, I'd have bucks blowing at me and they take off. Luckily, none of them were shooters. Uh, so I decided to move my stand up the hill. And what was going on there, they weren't actually coming to the scrape. They was going uh, downwind of it and uh, scent checking it from up there. So I placed my stand up there and ended up killing a really nice buck. But uh, the story behind that buck, the year before, uh, him and this was late 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 season. I'm talking like first week of January. I had about five bucks come in They'd already bachelored up together. I heard them actually tinkling horns. I couldn't get a shot One of them was a great big dude and I always thought man I'd like to kill him another one had like a pickle fork and a great big side I ended up finding the pickle fork side here. I've got two years of that never did see that buck again the buck I killed uh, that same year before I killed him I also went in, and went in and I found both of his sheds, a match set of sheds, and I ended up killing that buck right up here on the hill. Okay, this spot right here has got some memories too. This giant sycamore behind me. I don't know if you guys remember the episode. Uh, I shot a real tall eight pointer that grunted when I shot him. Uh, basically, what I was doing here was hunting an edge, what I call an edge. I'm gonna show you here in a minute. Back behind me, all this is really thick and grown up. What happened, some micro winds uh, came in here one year and just destroyed a big patch of trees down through there. Of course, that all fell down and grew up, basically created an edge. So I had the open woods here, kind of following in this edge, deer trickle in and out of that stuff. Uh, first couple years it was pretty good, but over time the spot beside it over here just kind of grew up so bad the deer quit using it. So I kind of had to abandon this stand. Uh, I've hunted on the back side of it before. I killed a buck over there, and that's also where I almost killed Honcho, if you remember that. But uh, the buck I killed out of this tree, I think in the video, I thought he was about four years old. I confirmed with a neighboring property owner through a lot of trail cam pictures that buck was actually seven years old. So he was an older buck, and they was after him too. He just seemed to be all over the place. But uh, I had a lot of does at the time following this edge and these thickets over here and he came in here looking. Bad mistake. First bone. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's a dead one. Uh, that one didn't make it. Okay, right here, rubs. Definitely one of the things you're looking for postseason. Uh, a lot of times you can pick up a buck's direction of travel or you're gonna find a rub line kind of give you an idea which way they're traveling um, this one right here is not real big but a big buck will use it too but uh, I'm pretty much looking for anything really big that's gonna have a lot of high gouge marks that's telling me it's probably gonna be a bigger buck so definitely look for rubs scrapes postseason with a licking branch Okay, this might look familiar to some of you, this body of water back behind me. Uh, yeah. The buck I killed this year, this is where I bolted in from. I was putting in way back that way, traveling this big, long body of water, coming in way down that way, and then up this high wall. This is actually a lower section right here. The part that I came in was really high. I didn't want to come up in here because this is one of the places I was anticipating deer to come from. And the reason is, um, I hunt coal mine ground, so it's all I mean, it's what we call spoil banks. It's real hilly. But the whole length of this high wall is a flat. And there's, it's just thick. There are so many deadfalls and stuff down in here. The deer, they travel this and then they bleed up into the hills and the spoils and they bed and everything. But this is like a travel corridor. And there for a while, it got so choked off with dead trees. And there's a lot of pines in here. And when they die, they fall and it's just a mess. So I'm gonna show you something that I did to kind of benefit me after the 2016 season. I came in here post season with a chainsaw and I actually cut just a little bit of a trail down through here that because the, the deer sign was starting to get kind of sparse and I figured opening it up just a little bit would help and it did. 
their sign now, they're using it again. Sometimes doing just little things like that will pay off for you. Okay, right here. This is more what I'm looking for. Uh, pretty nice rub on a big old cedar tree. Uh, kind of in a thicket area here. Uh, looks like a bedding area probably. But uh, I love sign like this. He's just beat everything to snot, got limbs twisted off. Just hope you made it through the season. Okay, now check this out. This is a rub right here. Uh, this particular rub right here, I've put a camera on it like three years in a row. And I get big bucks hitting on it. I also get small bucks and medium bucks. It's like a community rub. But when you see gouge marks like that, that is a big buck doing that. Look how high that is. I'm 5'10". That's up to my cheekbone right there. Um, those are deep, hard gouge marks. This gets hit every year. I've got trail cam videos of big bucks on this. And I started getting them in the daylight. So I got to thinking about it. And I thought, man, I need to get a stand in here because I'm always getting pictures of does back here constantly. So come November, you got the does around, you got the big bucks coming in. Some of these are nighttime uh, rubs, but I started getting them in the daytime too, and they're shooters. So there's a distinguished trail going through all these little saplings right here and there was just not a good place to put a stand except one tree over there about 25 yards so what i did i came in here with my wicked saw and i trimmed a bunch of these little four inch saplings but i left them high i didn't want to cut them down low because i didn't want the deer to start using that spot i didn't want them coming right at me so i left them high so it's just like it was but i've got shots now all the way to this trail that's crossing right through here nice weather we're getting outside to shoot our bows you probably hear some gunshots in the background we're at a shooting club uh, everybody just wants to get outside finally and do some shooting so when you're shooting with your bow the natural thing of course is to stand on the ground and shoot at a target downrange that's fine you're gonna shoot thousands of hours like that no problem but we want to make sure that you also practice shooting how you're going to hunt. If you're a tree stand hunter or a ground blind hunter, there's some unique features there in your shooting that you want to stay familiarized with so that come next fall, nothing surprises you. So we've got a couple scenarios set up here and we're going to do a little shooting. You don't realize how much stability you give up when you take your legs out of the equation. Just when you have to sit down, your body is a lot more unstable than if you're standing up. Um, so we want to take a couple shots like this. There's two shooting scenarios when you're in a stool situation like this, uh, which would be shooting across both of your legs, or sometime you may be caught to where your legs are kind of split and you're shooting this way. Uh, you know, if you have a preference, obviously practice that, but you might want to practice both just in case. Obviously, when you're shooting from a tree stand, there are angles that you have to take into account when you're a bow hunter. You know, where are the vitals from an elevated position versus being down at the ground? And there's just some things with shooting form. You want to make sure you bend at the waist. Don't just drop your front arm to take aim. Uh, just some things to keep in mind when you're shooting from a tree stand. And the best way to do that is to just practice. That's it guys, just some practice things to think of this off season. Back to you guys. Hey, you know, Justin, that is one thing that I know we talk about a lot, but sometimes I think we spend more time talking about it than actually doing it. I mean, sure. practicing in those real situations are by far the best thing to do. For yeah, sure. definitely. So great tip from PJ and Lancaster Archery as always. We appreciate that. Guys, next up, we're going to dive right into trophy photos. Uh, so let's get to it. Dalton Lewis. Melanie and Sean Nick. Ryan Sharps Kids. Gary Goforth. Terry Chison. Hey guys, those are some great trophies. Justin, now it's time to pick a winner. But before we get to that, remember guys, you're going to get a hat and a prize 
from Pine Ridge Archery. That's what are they right. going to get? Allen keys. They're going to get a set of Allen keys, the infamous yellow Allen keys that everybody's seen from Pine Ridge Archery. We used to have bowhunting.com and those are kind of cool. We need and a Pine Ridge quick stand, which actually has come in very handy for me in a turkey blind here this spring. So you're going to get those from Pine Ridge plus a bow hunter die hat from us. So this week's winner, Mr. Graff, who's it going to be? Oh, this is tough now. I know you were kind of pushing me on this Dalton Lewis. I mean, I agree. I mean, it's a great photo, great buck, fall leaves. I mean, he's looking great. But, man, it's turkey season, Justin. I don't know. This is a tough one. So you, are you trumping me, would you say? I'm, I... I think we're going to have to give this one to Melanie and Sean. I mean, come on. Two turkeys, great photo. I'm sorry. And look, he's got his arm around her. He looks like they're, they're in love. Good for them. Hopefully they're not brother and sister, and I'm screwing this all up. <laughs> they are the winners. Right now. So Melanie and Sean are our winners. Guys, congratulations. Make sure you email your information to info at bowhunting.com. We will get your prizes sent out to you. Don't forget, too, to hashtag your photos, bowhunt or die. We're going to right. start pulling photos from that as well if you're an Instagram fan. Yeah, so guys, thanks for sending in the trophy photos for this week's episode. That is all we've got for this week. Todd needs to eat and get on the road to Kansas. So guys, we will see you next week right here on Bowhunter Die with some more great bow hunting action. For more exciting action, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and receive live updates from our team members as well as the latest happenings in the bow hunting and archery world. Be sure to share your photos, stories, and experiences as well. And don't forget to pick up your official bowhunting.com and bowhunter die gear by visiting bowhunting.com forward slash gear. We have a full selection of hats, shirts, decals, wristbands, and much more. Ready, Brad? Come on, Brad. Come on, dude. You're making me nervous back there. Come on. I'll let Brad call action. Brad's thinking about killing us. Brad, are you thinking about killing us? No. No. Are you We're having fun? Good. How's it been your first couple days? Good. Good so far. All right. Yeah. Dude, we are going to loosen you up. <laughs> <laughs> when Brad doesn't show up, fun, boy. I don't know why. <laughs> I won't even bother calling. Just be like he's gone. All right, we are rolling. It was polo shirt and gold chain all together. Nice. Yeah, it was two Rolex. Just don't be balling.